You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. We got a special episode of the Write Project podcast for you this week. We're asking some of the top-selling authors in Atlantic Canada what their advice for their younger writing self would be. I find this is a great question. This is a great way to suss out some advice for yourself as a young author. What would you go back and fix? What would you change? What would you do better? What do you wish you could have done? To answer this question, the Write Project podcast, we have selected 10 of the best authors in Atlantic Canada at this moment. We have Helen Escott, the author of Operation Wormwood, currently the top-selling novel in Newfoundland. We have Chelsea B., the author of London Calling. We have John Dobbin, the author of The Starving, to be released in 2019. We have Amanda Labonte, who has the fan-favorite series Call of the Sea, based on mermaids in Newfoundland, and the best-selling author of Supernatural Causes. We have Diana Brown, the author of Saltwater Joys. We have Ellen Curtis, the author of Compendium, Infinity, and the Tourniquet Reprisal. We have Brad Dunn, the author of the Newfoundland-based werewolf drama After Dark Vapors, that releases October. We have Bridget Canning, who was just shortlisted for the Newfoundland Labrador Book Awards for her novel The Greatest Hits of Wanda Janes. We have Mary Walsh, who was also shortlisted for the Newfoundland Labrador Book Awards for her novel Crying for the Moon. And we have Peter Bro, a New Brunswick-based comic book author. And we have me, Matthew LeDrew, not just your host, but author of the best-selling Black Womb series, as well as the Xander Drew series, the Infinity series, Touch Your Nose, and Jacoby Street, one of my favorites. Uh, I started writing when I was very young. Uh, I, I've been writing for as long as I can remember, actually, but my first novel that saw print, which was released about 11 years ago, I'd started writing that when I was 16, and for better or worse, it stayed in roughly the same shape. I lucked into a few things. I lucked into structure, and I lucked into good dialogue. I took in a lot of media. I read a lot. I watched a lot of movies. Never dissuade your kid from watching movies, as long as they're good movies, like good, intelligent movies. But reading is also very important. But because I took in a lot of media, I knew the patterns. Like, I just, I didn't know what I knew, but I knew the way that a story was structured. I knew the way it worked. I knew that you started here, You reminded people about what was up, and then it went over here. I've always said that you can get away with a lot if your structure is good and your dialogue is tight. People will still notice the flaws in your narratives, and will still notice and nitpick and stuff like that, but good structure and good dialogue will wallpaper over a lot of the problems. To use an an analogy... It'll pa- it'll get you your, your security deposit back. <laughs> it'll it'll paper over some of the problems with the narrative and some of the other issues along. Hopefully, as you grow, you'll be able to not have those issues. You won't have to rely on that. But structure and dialogue are still the main two, the backbones of any well-written work. Uh, my advice for young writers or my younger writing self would be to set a word limit every day, like a goal that you will meet, but hopefully not surpass, and make it achievable for you. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, In On Writing, Stephen King suggests 2,000 words a day. I think that's a bit nuts for anyone who has a day job or anything like that. If you can do that, that's great. Most people I know can't. Uh, Even most people trying to make a legitimate go at writing can only do about 1,000 words a day, and that's fine. If it's 1,000, great. If it's 500, great. If it's 250, great. If it's 125, also great. Like, as long as it works for you. Because when you meet that goal every day, you're going to get an endorphin buzz from that. You're going to um, feel accomplished that, hey, I got in my 250 words today, or whatever goal you set. But don't just set it as a lower limit. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to get at least this. Also set it as the upper limit. So whether it's 250, 500, 125, whatever it is, set that limit that you're not going to go above, even though you might want to, even though you might be excited and, oh, I know what's going to happen next. That's good, because you won't burn out doing that. Because if you sit there and you 
write and you write for 20 hours in one day until all your ideas are just expanded and gone. When you sit down to write the next day, you're not going to be able to write anything, and you won't really be able to write for sometimes a week or more, uh, and it ends up being a detriment in the long run. It's it's a rally race, not a sprint. So you do a little bit every day. You set not just a limit to how little you write, but also how much you write, and when you force yourself to stop like that, even though you've got something really cool coming up, what happens is you'll remember that really cool thing. Maybe you'll make a little jot note to yourself, or you'll just remember it if you've got a good memory, and you'll go, oh, I know what I want to do tomorrow, and you'll wake up tomorrow, or in the evening, or whenever you sit down to write, and you'll do that part. But in the intervening time, you've been thinking about what comes next, because you're excited. It's your book. You should be excited. And it allows you to always keep the ideas fresh in your mind, and it allows you to always have the next thing to work on. It seems obvious, but it works really well. The big key is to make it something that works for you. Let's take two examples. If I set it to 2,000 words, and I don't reach it, I feel bad every single day. Like, I'll sit there and I'll go, ah, I didn't get my 2,000 words in today. I had set a goal and all I got was 1,500 and I just, I feel like a failure and eventually that weighs on me and I start taking days off and I start taking a week off and I start to say, oh, maybe I should do some more research and stuff like this and you feel down because you didn't reach your goal. But if someone else, if my friend John sets his goal at a thousand words and he reaches it and he goes and he just reaches those a thousand a thousand and five words every day he gets that endorphin buzz he says oh i accomplished what i needed to do today and that powers him to keep doing it over and over again even though we all know that if i if we look at it logistically i wrote 500 more words than him every day so it's a thing of knowing yourself and knowing where your limits are and making it achievable you're not shooting for the stars you're shooting for the roof you just want you want to make it something that you can achieve so that you feel accomplished every day with rare exception if you can do it every day and that's the question because i know a lot of you have lives a lot of you have children a lot of you have jobs some of you might have two jobs or more or are going to school we're on chmr so a good chunk of my listeners are probably in school right now i know it's hard and it's hard to say well i can't write every day you can if you set the word limit low enough and that's what you got to do because you got to have a life as well so uh, you might feel silly setting it at 250 or 125 or 500 but if that's what you've got to do to make it a little bit every day that you can achieve then definitely do it that way that would be my advice to my younger writing self and my advice to all the young writers out there but you guys didn't tune in to listen to me so on the line we've got calling in the boards lit up there uh first i've got Helen Escott, author of Operation Wormwood. What would your advice be for your younger writing self, Helen? I think to explore different genres more. As a young female, I tended to stay in the romantic feel, reading books about romance, and then I got into biographies, and I love biographies. I just love reading about people. I wish I had explored different genres earlier, and I think it's just to keep reading. Read as much as you can, because that's the university for writing, is just reading other writers and finding other writers that you feel you fit in with. Okay, that's great, Helen. Thanks much. Next on the line, we have Chelsea B., author of London Calling, and also an author from Chillers from the Rock. What's your advice for your younger writing self, Chelsea? Finish something and finish anything. Because I started writing at 14 and have nothing to show for it. And I mean, that was a good probably seven or eight years where I was writing and then, you know, would write by hand and then would lose the pages and, you know, not really, even if the novel idea wasn't good, finishing it is such a learning experience that you can trash that, but you can come out so much better in the end. Will you learn how to finish a novel? Mm -hmm. Because just like dialogue, just like structure, Mm -hmm. paragraph construction, sentence construction, finishing yeah. is an art form and you're not going to get it right the first time yeah. but you need to have those bad endings if you just right. say oh and now I'm going to stop like that you're not going to learn those skills mm-hmm. Well, in high school, they don't teach you. Well, they don't teach you how to write a novel because Stephen really, King do they still need has to? not learned those skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But yeah, and I, I mean, at like 21 or 22, I had to learn the difference between narrative fiction and an actual scene because I was writing the summary of what happened. And they were like, the drama is in the scene, is in drawing it out and letting the reader experience it. And it took me so long. And um, I had a class with Lisa Moore and she really pried that out of me. And it's probably the best thing that I ever learned throughout my degree because it I need it. Interesting. Okay, thanks, Chelsea. That's great. Thanks for calling in. Next, we have John Dobbin whose novel The Starving debuts in 2019. He was also heavily featured with two stories in Chillers from the Rock. What's your advice for your younger writing self, John? Just write. That's what I would say. Uh, don't, don't come up with excuses. Don't think that there's too much to do. Just write. Yeah. Make the time. Do it. It's like anything. There's always going to be a reason not to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, next, we have Amanda Labonte, the author of Call of the Sea, Supernatural Causes, and Drawn to the Tines. What's your advice for your younger writing self, Amanda? Finish the project. Like? Well, like, it took me seven years, I think. Like, like for start to finish, to actually finish the draft for Call of the Sea. And Call of the Sea was my first book. So that's, I just kept giving myself reasons that it wasn't, that, that I wasn't doing a good job and to stop and start over and to like I should have just finished it I, I know a lot of also people, go to a writing class like I know a lot of people could benefit from that advice yeah. actually where like I mean there are people uh, that come to the conventions yeah. every year the sci-fi and the rock and they'll tell me about their idea and they'll right there and there are always reasons not to have done it like the the thing I needed to do was was go to a writing class and I kept telling myself I didn't need to do that because you know I had a I had an arts degree of course I know how to write like yeah. I didn't need to do that and that was I didn't have a degree in creative writing and I didn't I hadn't done any creative writing so it was silly to think that I could just do it without support like that it was okay like it's okay to to kind of get that kind of guidance yeah because the reason that so wait if the was, arts degree isn't yeah. good for the creative part of the world what is the arts so degree it's good, good for critical for? thinking like it it, it's not that is. it's not, i mean i love the critical thinking are you part. you know if, if you go out and dance all the time does that mean you never if you want to be a professional dancer you don't have to take a dance class no to help you with it Clearly. it's kind of like you know i know how two string sentences together and my grammar is is somewhat fine aaron might Vance might argue that my use of commas is questionable. Yes. From time to time. And that your use of question marks is commable. Oh, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, but I think so. So those two things. I think if I had gone to a writing, because the, the thing the writing class did for me, um, and I went to writing classes with Paul Butler when he still lived in Newfoundland, and uh, he's in Alberta now, and I think sometimes he does distance stuff. If if you ever get a chance to work with him, he's he's a great mentor. Um, but the thing that did for me was explain to me how to finish a book. So um, how to, you know, get your key scenes and that it's okay to not write everything in absolute order. And the other great exercise we did was to write our story in 500 words. So it was like, almost like you would your synopsis but like your full like ruin the ending like your whole synopsis but like 500 words and then use that as your guide for for writing almost that's an interesting one i may steal that that's yeah 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 it's a great one and um and it so that was really good because it kind of even though i changed things from that point on it kind of gave me like okay this is where i'm going yeah um and i knew that so so that and then after doing that, then the, the next main thing was to, to just finish it because, um, like, you hear it and it sounds almost, like, hokey or ridiculous, but, you know, that a first draft only needs to exist. Like, it doesn't need yeah. to be good. It just needs to exist. And it's true because if you don't have the first draft, you can't get the second draft. I do. And I say to people yeah. that great is the enemy. I was just selling to, uh, saying to, uh, to Michelle Churchill yesterday, we're, uh-huh. we're putting out a book by her, and she's doing the second draft yep. of it now, said, great is the enemy of good. Good is the enemy of done. Yeah. Like, the first draft, all it needs to be is done. It's true. And the thing that, for me, that the first draft does is it gives me the bones to work from. As long as you're not afraid of 
criticism and afraid yeah. to throw out large chunks of it and rewrite them. Like that first draft, no one needs to see that but you and a few people you trust. Like yeah. that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get it done and then make it good. And for me to, um, especially the first book, the first what the first draft did was allow me to go back and develop the characters. So like it gave me the characters and they were still, and I would go back and I'd be like, oh, this is terrible. Like they're so two dimensional and they're one dimensional and they're, you know, they don't, they're not funny and like that everything is falling flat. But like your second draft is when, is when you catch that. It's when you make the characters interesting. It's when you make their relationships matter. It's when you, you build like, you, you build them up into in, into humans into people that that are interesting so so yeah I guess the the main goal or, or the main advice I would give to myself would have been to finish the draft and this was something I needed was to figure out how to finish the draft so for me finishing the draft meant um, get help it meant yeah. go talk to somebody because I was I was constantly writing I was you know rewriting my beginning over and over again I was trying you know I was changing the time period the book was set in I was I was going back and forth so just going to a class and getting perspective was great for somebody else that might be you know just have a really good conversation with somebody who's who's a couple of steps ahead of you on the writing chain like it it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go back and you know all of a sudden get your your degree in creative writing that's not what I mean I just mean get um, out and either talk to somebody like in person or virtually just connect with someone who's who's already doing it and figure out what advice it is that you need to get you to the next step and not to, to go on about it but one is a great way to get those tools like they have a lot of yeah stuff like they that. can they can definitely give you information on how to like, like what exists in the community because also even yeah. some like when they do writing classes sometimes yeah they do Wano, workshops yeah they do but there's even like discounts sometimes it's like here's the regular price and yeah. a discounted one for Wano members yeah there is and there's a lot of um and there's just a lot of Wano members who are at different stages of their career in different genres of writing and I think what I needed early on was was someone basically to to tell me how to get past the beginning of the book yeah and the idea like I had an idea and I'd write so many words and then I'd kind of like lose my enthusiasm or I'd, I'd think it was crap and I'd have to start again and and that was you know where I was and that was what helped me to uh to to get that first draft done so so you want to get the first draft done, but not just like, sometimes it's not enough to say, oh, just finish it. Sometimes you need to figure out what, what do, what do I not know that I need to know to finish it and who can, who can give me that guidance. Yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah. That was what I needed to do. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, next we have Diana Brown, author of Saltwater Joys. What's your advice for your younger writing self, Diana? To my younger writing self, I think I would, not to be so melodramatic, not to be so superficial, and to not care about what others will be reading, write the way that you want to write and not think about anyone else. So you don't have to um, pretend. So I think that I would tell my younger self, just write, just write, 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 write. Yeah, you can't worry about what anyone else say. I mean yeah it's the law of averages yeah it your book if it's read enough and hopefully it is like yeah all the success but if it's read enough it will be someone's most hated book absolutely that's just the law of averages it absolutely. may also be some it could also be someone's most loved book yeah but you have to take that rub. You know what I mean absolutely so there's a, a quote that I I'm gonna show my geek now yeah um because i i am a huge nerd but there's a quote from star trek the next generation that i love all all my favorite quotes from life come from captain picard i swear yeah uh it is you can commit no mistakes and still lose i like that it's you can commit no mistakes and still lose absolutely yeah that's not that's not weakness that's life yeah 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 Okay, thanks, Diana. Uh, Next, we have Ellen Curtis. Ellen is a partner at Engine Books, as well as a member of the executive board of the Writers' Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador. She's become famous for her short fiction, but has also written the novels Infinity, The Tourniquet Reprisal, and Exodus of Angels. Uh, What's your advice for your younger writing self, Ellen? Ooh, um, keep writing. 
I think it's easy to give up on something when it's hard. And I have had a lot of times where I find writing hard. So I think telling myself that, yeah, there's good things around the corner if you just stick with it is important. Okay, short but sweet. I like it. Uh, Next on the line, we have Brad Dunn, author of After Dark Vapors, which comes out this October. What's your advice for your younger writing self, Brad? I wish I could go back to, I'm going to say like 2004 four or five when I got out of high school okay like I really wanted to get into writing and I was just like it was kind of like like earlier when we talked about having a big ego versus having like like being insecure like I was like super insecure when I was like when I was a teenager and I would love to just go back and be like man just write like the worst someone can say is that they don't like it yeah it's like man you don't even need to show anybody there's that you can just like like number one it's gonna be bad (laughs) Yep. <laughs> like there's there's no shortcut through the mound of filth you have to climb through to get to being even an okay writer. Yeah. Like it's, it's just there's you have to write so much bad drafts before yep. you can write something even that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I could just go back and and tell this to this like 17, 18 year old kid. Yeah. Uh, and just be like, man, like if you want to write a rip off story about like, you know, the, 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 the last Arthur C. Clarke book you, you read, just write it, you know, like, write a 10,000 word or 10,000 page book novel about describing a planet. Yeah. And like, I think 2009, I think I said to myself, I, I, I finally said like, man, I just need to write. Like, I just need to pick something and just write it and just work it out. And I rewrote Spider-Man 3. <laughs> because <laughs> I was like, I hated that movie so much. And I was like, man, I'm going to write the, the version that I wish that they had made. I have been tempted to do that lately and put it up on it as a blog or something yeah. like that. And obviously nothing I can make money of. No. But uh, for the, the Justice League movies, the DCEU right. ones, to come yeah. back to that. Because yeah. there was... Let's tangent for a second oh, back to yeah. D- DCEU stuff. Yeah. But there is a moment in the Man of Steel movie where they reference that Kryptonians used to colonize other worlds. And mm-hmm. that... They'd sent people to Earth before. Right. They have never picked up on that thread. But what I thought that was going to be was that I was thinking that Darkseed, the Amazons, and the Atlanteans were all going to be Kryptonians. Just people that have, like, it's so far back in the lineage that they're not super powerful anymore. They're just, they're not Superman powerful. They're just kind of powerful. And that was going to be the origin for all powered people was yeah. a like a 5000 year old kryptonian ship. Okay. Yeah. Which to me is just there you go kind yeah. of thing. Uh, yeah, like if you if you start with like fan fiction. Yeah. You can just like eventually you can just make it your own cuz yeah. you eventually you'll get far like mom like so my the, whole creative... you, uh, you're an advocate of the EL Jane's method then. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah cuz it started out as Twilight fan fiction. It started right? out as Master of the Universe, which was a Twilight fan fiction. Okay. Yeah. But like my whole creative theory is that there's no there's nothing original. Everything is a simulacrum. Yes. Of like what Well, that's how language works. Like yeah. every word that you've said in this interview has been said before. Yeah, I'm very like postmodern in that way that like everything we take is just you you've taken all you've read all these books you put it into a blender and now you've made a new book yep and that's there's, there's nothing wrong with that no right? that's like what, that's what it is there's and obviously you can be very derivative or you can put your own fingerprint on it but like i think the goal is always to make sure that you didn't just put one book into a blender <laughs> yeah, exactly. blend it up with a little bit of yourself yeah and spit it out because that's not far enough removed exactly if you put 20 books in a blender yeah. blend it up put a little bit of your salt in it then it's fine exactly yeah but you can't put someone in like a room from birth to like 30 years old and then they just come out and write a novel like uh, I'm pretty sure if you put someone uh, <laughs> like held someone captive like an in old a room <laughs> from birth to 90 years sorry from birth to 30 years old yeah <laughs> they could write a novel about that yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a bestseller in that but yeah, like my like none of this happens in a vacuum. No, right? Like you need to consume all these different things in order to produce something new. Yes. The idea that like if you're starting out, the anxiety of influence is so strong. Yeah. You can't get out of it. Like there's just no way. Like so, you know, I wish that I could have gone back when I was like a teenager and been like, man, just just write the 
the knockoff story that you have in your head. Yep. And just like keep it to yourself. Like that's fine. And What's just the worst keep, that can happen? Just keep doing it. And uh, eventually, I did. Uh, it just would have been nice if if I had done it younger. That's you know? how I started actually, but I didn't actually write them down. I plotted them. So I yeah. plotted stuff as spinoffs, and I added in my own like original characters to pre-existing yeah. franchises. And eventually, the characters I added in, I grew to like enough that I just want to write about them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean... And then it's like, if you just keep doing it, like eventually you're going to find something... That's your own. Like, yeah. This this how it is. I mean, I don't know how many times I rewrote Final Fantasy VII in my head when I was a teenager. Yeah. You know, I, I wish I just put it to paper and then. How many versions did she live in? Oh, uh, Ares. Yeah. Uh, I I'm a I'm a fan of the Ares death. Like I think that's a good. I think that's a great storytelling moment in, yeah. in that video game. That was a good moment. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the line we have Bridget Canning, whose novel The Greatest Hits of Wanda Janes was shortlisted for a Newfoundland and Labrador Book Award this year. I also must say that her collection of short stories, What's Written in the Ladies, is one of the greatest short story collections I've seen in the last year what's your advice for your younger writing self bridget oh wow um stop fooling yourself you keep telling yourself that you're writing just for you you're not this is what you want to do don't be so afraid don't be afraid and uh i would probably tell myself to be particular with like i i i've only really been showing my work for about nine or ten years i finally kind of worked up the courage to actually show my work to my friends and things like that so when i was younger and in my 20s it was something that i would never dare to show anybody i just had myself convinced that it was bad or that this wasn't um it was just a fruitless pursuit and i did have a couple of negative experiences uh where you know i had bad boyfriends and i showed my work and they crapped all over it and and it was you know very negative you know, humiliating experience so i think if i was going to tell my younger self like you know see, seek out seek out a gentle mentor so you have someone who's going to be encouraging and recognizes that this is something that you care about and they're not going to be competitive with it. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, just, you know, I probably just broadly encouraging that way, I guess. Okay, thanks, Bridget. Next on the line, we have Mary Walsh, famous for everything. This hour has 22 minutes, as well as uh, her most recent novel, Crying for the Moon, was shortlisted for a Newfoundland and Labrador Book Award. What's your advice to your younger writing self, Mary? You know, I guess it's the same old message that you just keep hearing all the time, and I just have to keep hearing it all the time, that there's no point in trying to write like someone else. There's no point in trying to be who you're not. There's only point is to be who you are and to write what you write like and to share your experience strength and hope i suppose or whatever you know what i mean I like do. i often when i i i have to write out loud because i often find when i put on my writerly cap and just write away it often sounds a bit pretentious and not like myself and you know, I'd love to be a uh, um, uh, you know, I'd love to be him. I'd love to be able to write more in one sentence than most people could write in an entire book, but I'm not him. I'm and thankful you're not him. I, 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 <laughs> I like you the way you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good. But, but, um, yeah, that's what I just say, that thing that we're always trying to be what we're not. And uh, just to, you know, every day make the effort to be your, yourself, you know, to yeah. your own, to thine own self be true, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mary, for calling in. Uh, next on the line, we have Peter Bro. He is one of the authors of Mississippi Zombie, as well as The Green Giant. What's your advice for your younger writing self, Peter? Keep doing it. Just keep keep pumping it out. When I was in junior high school and high school, I did a lot of writing, Like, but it was just for myself. Like, I read a lot of, like I said, you know, before, Edgar Rice Burroughs. I read a lot of Robert E. Howard, big, big, big Conan the Barbarian fan. Would write my own Conan the Barbarian stories. I'd write my own stories based on different Marvel and DC characters, but I never ever wrote them in a comic script form, right? Because that's a different way to write. And uh, I just, I stopped doing it. Like, I stopped doing it when I got out of high school. I never really... Like I said, it was my wife, Kelly, who prompted me, like, you know, a year and a half or so ago. She said, why don't you, why don't you get back into writing? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. And, and so I did, and I'm very, very thankful that she prompted me back into it. But if I could tell my younger self anything, I would say just, 
just keep on creating. You know, don't don't stop. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. Again, thanks, everyone, for listening. If you want any other advice on what to do if you're a young author or an author trying to find their way, please reach out to us on the Write Project podcast or go on the Genre Writers of Atlantic Canada website where there's a large community of authors that are waiting to help. Have yourself a wonderful day, and thanks for listening to the Write Project podcast on CHMR.